As the previous panelists demonstrate, sometimes innovation requires taking a chance on a person, perhaps on a company or an idea. In their venture, Startup Health, Dr. Howard Krein and Stephen Krein are scouting the globe for innovators, visionaries, and change makers who are not afraid to take chances and think big. Please welcome them to the stage. Uh, thank you, Meredith. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Robin, thank you for having us here. What a wonderful, memorable conference this has been. Uh, it really has been special. Um, when, we, when I came two years ago, uh, I knew it was a special conference, but uh, certainly the opportunity to, to speak between the Holy Father and Tony Robbins is a once-in-a-lifetime <laughs> opportunity that uh, I don't know if my mother's going to believe. <laughs> so... Um, it really is a, an honor to be here. The last time I was at this conference uh, was with my father-in-law, Vice President Biden, and we were discussing the beginning of the federal cancer moonshot. And we talked about uh, our goals about accelerating the cure for cancer, the race for the cure for cancer. I'm happy to report that the bulk of that moonshot has been moved into the Biden Cancer Initiative, um, which is still dedicated to accelerating uh, the, the cure for cancer. At Startup Health, we are in full support of not only the cancer moonshot, but we've created nine additional moonshots that we really do think are gonna affect the health and well-being of everybody uh, on this planet. At the heart of our business, uh, uh, that the, we believe that at the heart of our business, the transformation of healthcare can only be done together. It can't be done in silos. And certainly, uh, the Holy Father uh, this, this afternoon when he was speaking mentioned that we have to do it together in unity and in collaboration. It's only possible with the collaboration of all the stakeholders and like Unite to Cure has done, bringing together spiritual leaders, doctors, um, scientists, and patients to create real and sustainable change is the only way that this is going to happen. So today, we're here to invite you all on a journey with us. And the journey, we believe, will change the health and well-being of everybody on this planet. And I know it sounds like an, impossi an impossible journey, um, but we believe it's possible. But the first thing that has to happen for us to believe that it's possible is we have to change our mindset. And we have to believe that it can be done. So I want to start off this session by just uh, having us watch a little video that was put together by one of our partners, Google. Uh, and I think this is going to just help sort of set the mindset for the rest of uh, our discussion. The actual moonshot is wonderful, inspirational, poetic, beautiful, involved, great technical challenges, genuine heroism. It brought the world together. But think about the Polynesian Islander on the dugout canoe, deciding one day they were gonna go that way. No one had ever been that way before. No one even knew if there was anything that way before. It was amazing and it changed the world. People can set their minds to magical, seemingly impossible ideas, and then through science and technology, bring them to reality. And that then sets other people on fire, that other things that look impossible might be accomplishable. Galileo is such a hero, you know, in thinking big, and what he represents to me is both curiosity and wonder that humanity had, that he had, that pushed him and drove himself to invent and work on the first telescopes that allowed us to see the moon, and here we are. These aviation pioneers were, were figuring it out as they went. No one really knew how to build an airplane, right? No one knew how to fly an airplane. It was amazing and crazy and wonderful, and they wanted to explore. Many years ago, the great British explorer George Mallory, who was to die on Mount Everest, was asked why did he want to climb it. He said because it is there. There's so many challenges in the world and you can feel daunted by that, you know, and sort of oppressed by that. Or you kind of say, how might we think differently about this? Everyone else in the world is working on the next 10%. If you can be the one that delivers that 10 times improvement, you have a chance to really change things. If you want cars to run at 50 miles per gallon, fine, you can retool your car a little bit. 
but if I tell you it has to run on a gallon of gas for 500 miles, you have to start over. You need a lot of courage in this work and you need a lot of persistence. One of the things that's really critical is not only having the courage to keep trying every day or thinking big, even if you don't really 100% believe it's possible, like you might think this might be possible. Have the courage to try. That's how the greatest things have happened. You don't spend your time being bothered that you can't teleport from here to Japan because there's a part of you that thinks it's impossible. Moonshot thinking is choosing to be bothered by that. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Humanity's progress has been a series of amazing, audacious things from the very small and personal up to the great, big and grand. And we are a species of moonshots. And to me, that's like the really amazing, poetic and inspirational thing. I think our ambitions are a glass ceiling on what we can accomplish. When you find your passion, you're unstoppable. You can make amazing things happen. It's been true through all of history. I believe in the human spirit, and I believe that there are always going to be crazy people who will get out of bed one morning and say, you know what, I think I can build a space elevator, and let's go and do it. But I think that if we become afraid to take these great big risks, we stop inspiring people. We stop achieving things. And the biggest nightmare scenario is that we won't have what it takes to solve the really big challenges. When Kennedy said that we would put a man on the moon, it's about the fact that he said, we don't know how to do this yet, and we're going to do it anyway. And that sense chills up everybody's spine. Because if that happens, what couldn't we do? Every time I see that video, um, I well, not only think about moonshots, but I think about Roger Bannister. Does everybody know who Roger Bannister is? or I should say was, right? He recently passed away, but was the clearest example of how mindset can change reality, right? So for those of you who don't know, Roger Bannister, uh, actually we're at a medical conference, was a medical student who broke the four minute mile for the first time in history. It was thought to be impossible. And it stood for all of humanity until he broke it. The most important thing about that is, do you know how long the record lasted? Six weeks. Six weeks later, it was broken again. Why? Because they believed they could do it. And now it's commonplace, although I can't run it, but it's commonplace. But it shows what mindset can do. The moonshot mindset reminds us that audacious goals are, best, are the best way to bring about revolutionary change and that's exactly what we need in healthcare. Right now, we are at an epic moment in time. What's fascinating about this unique moment in time is that, and I've been an entrepreneur for 25 years, we've never had these five macro conditions coming together at exactly the same time. You've got this amazing change happening all around the world, not just in the United States and not just in certain regions, but business models are changing and how people pay for their health care. There's an urgency with the acceleration of chronic disease, aging, and cost. But it's the golden age of entrepreneurship. Having been an entrepreneur back in the mid-90s and starting an internet company, the access to money, and resources and partners who are willing to help at a speed at which they never could develop before with now platforms like the Apple Watch. And when you add to that this incredible surge of new technologies that are creating new data sets that never existed before, coupled on top of the globalization of healthcare, conversations between people all over the world about what works and what doesn't work. And so what it's ushered in now is finally the creative destruction of the industry that has not yet been cre in, uh, cre creatively destructed by technology. We've watched over the past 20 years as every industry has been truly transformed by the internet and technology, but for healthcare and education. And what's fascinating is if you really understand the role of the entrepreneur and the innovator, 
in all of these creative destruction moments for every industry, you recognize that industries go through the same life, life cycles as they emerge as new industries that people hardly recognize before becoming really growth industries. And as they grow and people start to pile in and capital starts to pile in, it becomes a status industry, which could last for oftentimes decades before it becomes a depleted industry. Regulation, lawsuits, so much minutia that it's incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to innovate. And then again, entrepreneurs play yet again a role at reimagining and reinventing the industry. And so we're at that moment right now where the entrepreneur, the health transformer, is truly reimagining what is possible in this industry. And it's not just in the traditional hubs of innovation, like Silicon Valley or Boston or Tel Aviv. It's happening at every corner of the planet. The entrepreneurs, the innovators, the investors, are all creating things, but what's fascinating is they're no longer doing it in silos alone. It's lonely enough being an entrepreneur, but if you can connect with other entrepreneurs and other innovators and investors and partners, then so much more is possible. And we believe that by doing it right now with all of these macro conditions aligned, that we can accelerate the pace of innovation and look at the next 100 years of progress and make that a 25-year mission, a 25-year mission where exponential technologies that Peter Diamandis opened up the Unite to Cure conference describing what is now possible within our reach. And you could see that is actually a unique moment in time. So we've decided in 2011 to harness this power and begin investing in a global army of coachable entrepreneurs who are committed to achieving health moonshots. And each one of these words so carefully selected to represent what's unique about supporting and investing in a global army, not individuals, coachable entrepreneurs, not just entrepreneurs, and health moonshots, not just digital health and wellness companies. And what's fascinating is that when you start to look around the world through this lens, there's not just one or two of these moonshots. We've identified 10. 10 health moonshots that are going to change the world and impact billions of lives. Yeah. As a surgeon who practices still um, every day, I see the inefficiencies in medicine. It's, they're apparent. As an entrepreneur, as Stephen said, we, we see the innovation that's going on and the chance to reinvent and reimagine the health industry. Uh, as a person, I see way too many friends and family dying and suffering from very preventable diseases. And so when we went about selecting what our 10 health moonshots were, we tried to select the areas that we would have the most impact on the global community, on the world. And each of these, if we can accomplish, will affect not only hundreds of millions of people, but hopefully billions of people. And so quickly, just to go through, we, we, we figure you need to have access to care for everybody. This shouldn't be, you shouldn't be born into an area or have the privilege of access to care. It needs to be global. Cost to zero, we need to take care of each other. We need to cure disease, chronic diseases that are draining our healthcare system and the health resources need to be fixed. Women's health, children's health, nutrition and fitness, brain health, happiness and mental health. Thanks, Tony and Deepak, for really championing that for us. Uh, and longevity, which we keep hearing about. We need to, to not only increase the lifespan, but we really need to add quality life. And as it, those of us were in the uh, talk yesterday, we need to have the seagull's life, right? It, it flies, it thrives, and then on that last dive, dies. So when you think about these 10 health moonshots and you start to look for entrepreneurs who are working to achieve these health moonshots, what's fascinating is that we found and are now tracking over 10,000 entrepreneurs and companies all around the world who are working individually on health moonshots, individually on things that they believe will make an impact on people's lives. So in 2011, actually at the Oval Office in the United States, we announced Startup Health 
And since that time, we've selected 235 companies from 20 different countries in six continents. And what's fascinating is if you look at the map of where the entrepreneurs are that we've selected, it's just the tip of the iceberg. The earlier map that I showed you proved that innovation is everywhere. And so as we embark on adding 20 to 25 new entrepreneurs to this global army every quarter, from a pool of probably 350 to 400 entrepreneurs that apply to be a part of Startup Health, what's fascinating is that they are all desperately seeking connection to other people who are as ambitious and crazy as they are. And so what's fascinating about that is when you bring them together into a portfolio of companies and they're all willing to share what works and what doesn't work and who's helpful and who's not helpful, it no longer looks like just a global army of entrepreneurs and just a bunch of companies in a portfolio, but it looks like a company that can start to crack the code at what it's going to take to achieve Health Moonshot. So while the companies collectively have raised close to a billion dollars to achieve their health moonshots, there's some bigger obstacles in the way that we've discovered that are way more important than just the funding or the connectivity between these entrepreneurs. We found, in fact, much like any of us who've been entrepreneurs for a long time, it's not what you think, it's how you think. And as I listen to my audio books from both Deepak Chopra and Tony Robbins, and I listen to the podcast that Peter Diamandis puts out talking about this mindset, it's fascinating that if you collectively put this army together, not by what they're working on, not just by the moonshots they're working on, but by their mindsets, you can start to tackle what is really important, which is, which is that mindsets are like muscles. They need to be worked and mastered. And it takes a lot of practice to stay in what we call the health moonshot mindset. See, the entrepreneurs who are trying to transform this industry, trying to improve people's lives, need superpowers that go beyond just traditional entrepreneurship. They're up against so much gravitational pull from the rejection they get from investors, from the pilot programs that don't work, from the skepticism that they're fought, fighting for every day, that we found that if you could actually identify the mindsets that are unique to these entrepreneurs, and you could work with them every quarter over 25 years, that's 100 opportunities over 25 years to recalibrate on these mindsets. And so the first mindset apropos to a health moonshot is really what we call the long-term commitment that's needed. It's fascinating that within a couple of minutes you can tell what kinds of solutions people are working on, how ambitious they are. Are they talking about making a 25-year impact or are they committed for just a couple of years? So when entrepreneurs are all in and willing to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes, and it's incredible because when you meet entrepreneurs starting companies in this sector, they're uniquely different. A mother, a father, a sister, a brother, a child has been impacted and they are all in and they're gonna do whatever it takes for as long as it takes. So this first mindset sets the stage for literally seeing who's all in and who's not, which leads to really attracting the second mindset and the people that are around you and the supportive relationships that you need in order to achieve that mindset. It's fascinating when you actually just look at how important it is to support, have supportive relationships around you. And these moonshots act as a beacon and a magnet to attract everyone and everything you need. And the best part is it repels those that aren't interested and excited about the moonshot that you're working on. The third mindset is about a quarterly recalibration. This idea that you recalibrate and figure out what's working and what's not working and step back, not just heads down, but take a look and step back Who's helpful, who's not helpful, what's working, what's not working. And if you actually do the first three mindsets right, the confidence and the ambition grows instead of shrinks. It's really incredible to see how important it is for an entrepreneur to grow with confidence and ambition versus shrink. And all of a sudden, health moonshots start to become realistic and no longer sound like health moonshots. The fifth mindset is about self-awareness and coachability and actually talking not so much, but listening. Listening and figuring out what your unique ability is and what unique abilities you need around you. And if you actually listen more than you talk and you're coachable, it's amazing what will show up at your door to help you achieve that health moonshot.
The sixth is about healthy habits. And it's actually about making really good decisions and making sure that you're taking a break and exercising and taking care of yourself and self and sharing gratitude. And what's fascinating is that no worse decision is made by an entrepreneur than one who is not rested, has no perspective, and hasn't taken a vacation or had exercise or connected with their family in so long that they're not able to even have perspective about what they're working on and the progress they've made. And what's fascinating is the seventh mindset is about being a value creator. So many successful people come into healthcare so achieved with, with successes, whether as clinicians, entrepreneurs, or executives, and they need to paint a future that's much bigger than their past and almost see everything that they've done up until this time as practice, practice for what they're about to work on. And then finally, the eighth mindset, and it's one of my favorites because it's what has really been evident throughout the past three days at the Unite to Cure conference. The idea of being batteries included, my friend Dan Sullivan coined this term around being batteries included and in giving energy. Now, most entrepreneurs, innovators, and everybody that's showing up here has been self-selected because you have batteries. But what's fascinating is, do you have tolerance for batteries not included people around you? And if you're willing to say no, to those drains in your life, the team members and the family members that drain you, the idea that you're not allowing yourself to truly reach that moonshot, you'll find that this simple filter of whose batteries included and batteries not included can play an incredibly pivotal role at helping you achieve your health moonshots. So when you look at all eight of these mindsets and you think about a global army of entrepreneurs connected together with innovators and investors and partners who share that mindset, who share in this collective vision that anything is possible. They act as a filter, a filter to look for certain people that can help you and certain people that you don't want to help you. I want to actually see in this room, now I know there's already a room full of batteries included people here, selected by Robin, and the incredible team that she has over the past four uh, gatherings really identify those that want to give the energy to Unite to Cure. But if you are actually batters included, can you raise your hand? All right, so look around. Now I want you to do something a little different. I want you to actually link arms or hold hands with the people next to you. Hey, yeah. So you hear the chatter. So did, did anybody notice the energy shift just now? Right? So what's fascinating, oh, stay linked, stay linked, because you need to stay linked. This is a long-term commitment, remember? Yeah. What's really fascinating, uh, I love seeing Peter and Tony and Deepak and, and Sanjay linked arm in arm. This is fantastic because this is what it's all about. We all came here as individuals, but we're leaving connected as a global army. A global army that's united to cure a global army that's gonna come back two years from now and share in not only the progress we made, but share what's working and what's not working. And these 10 health moonshots, not only achievable by all of us, but by thousands of other people who have the same mindset, the mindset that's gonna allow us to achieve not only these 10 health moonshots, but so much, so much more, and we can really feel good about uniting to cure. Thank you very much. And he said, link, no kissing. Okay, it's linking. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Can I ask a Thank quick question? Because I know you have a video. My son is in, uh, part of a startup entrepreneur. It's, it's sustainable energy. But he talks a lot about, in that world, your, your concern is surviving. Yep. Because you have so many competitors, they, they don't particularly want to share yeah. or link arms. Yeah. So, so that's actually a mindset thing. So we use this filter to look for entrepreneurs that we want to invest in. We look, use it to look for investors <laughs> that we believe are going to be accretive to this community. It's interesting. It's really a, an important mindset. In healthcare in particular, we can't do it alone. Every other industry, entrepreneurs, rugged individualists can accomplish so much by actually destroying the big bureaucratic organizations and the government. In healthcare, we need to work together and collaborate. 
The, the idea that you can go direct to consumer, unfortunately, and fortunately for the health of our families and the safety of everyone we love, is something much more important to think about and recognize. So from our standpoint, this mindset in this sector, the health moonshot mindset, plays such a pivotal role. And that one thing tells us who we want in the Army or who has the ambition to have that mindset that we want to be a part of something so special. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank Mary. You. I was just going to add, and if you don't think it's tough to be in our family, because as soon as you start going down, somebody says, you're not being batteries included. And then, oh,